Welcome to the Cambridge Financial Podcast with Bert Salazar, CEO at Cambridge Financial Partners, LLC. This podcast is all about tax-preferred retirement planning, economics, financial risk management, and achieving a risk-free and successful financial life. Now, your host, Bert Salazar. Bert Salazar. Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Bert Salazar Retirement Show. My name is Bert Salazar, and I'm oh, it's always I'm here to kind of give you uh, feedback on retirement tax planning, uh, managing your retirement risk, and economics uh, from a business standpoint. Uh, we've been doing this now. I've been doing this now for almost four years, so we have 180 episodes. And the uh, title for this episode is The Benefits of a Tactical Retirement Blueprint, uh, Part 2. One of the things that we do in our firm, Gables Tax Planning Group, is we do tactical retirement blueprints for the vast majority of the clients that we engage. And the reason for that is the type of clients that we engage are usually anywhere between 5 and 10 years away from retirement, which is the perfect time to start doing tactical retirement blueprints. But often enough we also get those clients like come in like the day before they retire they want us to kind of fix their entire financial world in, in one day so we try to do the very best that we can for those clients but optimally uh, you want to start your retirement planning and your retirement distribution planning anywhere between five to ten years away from retirement so what I'd like to do today is I want to share with you uh, what's going on in the marketplace, what's happening with the U.S. economy, how can a tactical retirement blueprint uh, help you and your family in retirement, So, uh, and, and we'll get through some of those issues and concerns, but I'm going to be uh, giving you feedback on things that perhaps you really haven't thought about uh, from a business or economic stand standpoint. So what is, what is happening in the U.S. today? Well. Uh, just take a look at it. Uh, inflation is rampant. Uh, we have now uh, the highest inflation that we have had in the United States in over 40 years. Um, it's not getting any better. The U.S. Treasury, because of government decisions and so forth, uh, continues to print more and more money every single day. You know, they want to bail out uh, this group. They want to bail out this other group. They want to pay for... Uh, those that owe um, uh, monies on uh, college loans and so forth, not realizing that none of that is free. Therefore, uh, there's no free lunch in the United States from an economic perspective. So therefore, that is adding to the debt, uh, is not reducing the debt as most of these people claim that it's doing. But at the end of the day, it's forcing Americans to, Americans to try to do something else with their money. Because at the end of the day, the purchasing power of each and every dollar that they have is depreciating dramatically, and it has been for the last uh, one and a half to two years. So what do Americans uh, do? What can they do in order to avoid the fallacies of that, uh, what I call the uh, submarine tax uh, or torpedo tax? Because inflation is nothing and nothing more and nothing more and nothing less than too much money in the economy, uh, too much money chasing after very few goods and services. So therefore, the more money the economy has, the more money that people have, whether it is uh, fiat money, as I call it, fake money or not, obviously the higher the prices to acquire goods and services, and that's causing the purchasing power of every American to, to be down uh, dramatically uh, in 2021 and 2022, you know, up, up until the month of August, uh, which is uh, the month that I'm doing this podcast. Uh, I try to do one of these podcasts every single week just to continue to provide feedback and education because at the end of the day, I feel very strongly that education without uh, in, information as part of the education, but information without education always, always, always leads to failure. So uh, my point today today is to give you some uh, very good feedback 
that you can take with you and apply it and discuss it with your discuss it with your financial advisor. And if you don't have a financial advisor and you want to use our services, then obviously I'll give you information at the very end and you can reach out and you can uh, talk to one of our experts and then we'll walk you through the tactical retirement blueprint um, that we deal with on a, on a daily basis. Now, one of the major advantages that the tactical retirement blueprint and that we do at Gable's tax planning group has is that instead of looking at your financial world uh, through a microscope, we look at it through a telescope. And the reason for that is simple. When you look at your finances uh, through a telescope, you're able to see things that you were not able to see when you looked at them through a microscope. If you just review each and every product that you have in your retirement or financial portfolio, but you don't assimilate it with one another, then chances are you're only looking at those products individually. So you really have no uh, feedback as to one product can be hindering the performance of another product in the portfolio. But if you look at it through a telescope where you can put all the products that you have in, in the type of work that we do, and then you're able to see what product is doing on one side of the ledger versus what is doing on the other side. And then as you start to put products on top of products, then you're able to figure out truly the impact that those individual products are having on your entire uh, retirement or financial spectrum uh, from that perspective. Um, that, that brings me to, to a point that I think is very important, is that the tactical retirement blueprint that we use um, kind of focuses on, on taxes, uh, risk management, and retirement distribution planning. And if you have a financial plan in front of you, and that financial plan focuses on taxation, focuses on uh, inflation, focuses on retirement distribution planning, and focuses on risk management uh, from a volatility perspective, then you have a pretty good plan. So if you have one of those and there's no need for you to, to reach out to our firm or, or to reach out to me personally, because I think your financial advisor has done a really, really good job uh, from that perspective as well. Now, one of the things that I like to share with you, and this is something that I do with each and every one of my clients and all our staff does the same thing with our clients is, you know, we like the, the idea of using analogies because, you know, financial topics are not easy topics to understand. But when you use a financial analogy, uh, you're able to, to kind of simplify what you're trying to accomplish or what you're trying to communicate to your clients uh, from a uh, financial and or economic perspective. So I use uh, normally the mountain analogy. And this is an analogy that I have been using now probably for the last 25 years, in which I use uh, the analogy of someone trying to climb a mountain or a mountain climber, you could be a novice or you could be an expert to what happens in the financial world. So let's say that you're an individual that wants to climb Mount Everest. Now, Mount Everest, as you all know, is the highest mountain uh, in the world. It's sitting now at 29,029 feet. Now, the most difficult mountain, according to the experts, is K2 which is like 800 feet, uh, 800 feet lower than Mount Everest, but I'm just gonna use Mount Everest uh, for this exercise. So let's say that you wanna climb Mount Everest and you've never done it before, or you may be an intermediate climber, but now you wanna reach the, the pinnacle of climbing, you gotta get it, you wanna get up to, to Mount Everest. Well, first of all, you're gonna have to do a lot of training. And you have to get in, a, in really good physical condition um, mental condition is quite important because it's going to be a grueling uh, climb um, based on all the, the reports and all the videos and all the movies that I watch and documentaries uh, regarding climbing Mount Everest. And then it's going to take you anywhere between three to four months, could be two and a half months to three and a half months, depending on the weather, on the weather patterns um, in, in Mount Everest. 
And you only have a very small window in which you can climb the mountain because then uh, it becomes an impossibility uh, to climb that mountain because of uh, the different weathers and the storms that are coming through and so forth. So now let's say you get to uh, Mount Everest. Obviously, you're going to be you know, in the town. You, you're not even at base camp at this point in time. And if you've never been there, and then you're going to need a guide. So more than likely, you're going to hire a Sherpa. By the way, the average cost of climbing Mount Everest could be anywhere between twenty and forty thousand dollars, depending on on what guide you're going to choose, what equipment, and so forth. But you're going to hire a Sherpa, and the Sherpa hopefully has been to the top of the mountain a few times, and and obviously based on their experience, you know they're going to charge more and more and more along the way. But what would happen if you interview a Sherpa? And you ask the Sherpa if he or she could take you to the top of the mountain. And they say, yeah, absolutely. We can take you to the top of the mountain. We just don't know if we can safely bring you back down again. Now, how many of you would hire that Sherpa? That Sherpa? Raise your hands. I would argue none of you are going to hire the Sherpa. So one of the first analogies that I use regarding mountain and, and the retirement plan that we do through the tactical retirement blueprint is that the goal of a mountain climber is not to get to the summit. It's not to get to the top of the mountain. That's only half of the goal. The goal is to make it safely to the top of the mountain and then to make it safely back down the mountain so they can tell that story to friends, family, and uh, family members and so forth for the rest of their lives. Now, um, this is a true fact. 70% of the people that die uh, on Mount Everest do not die on the way up. They actually die on the way down. So 70% of everyone that has died on the mountain has died on the way down, not on the way up. So how do we quantify that from a retirement standpoint? Well, if you're climbing the mountain of retirement, that means that you know, you're working, you're fully employed, you could be a professional, you could be a blue collar worker, you could be self-employed. Um, you're trying to maximize your retirement contributions, you're putting monies into your uh, 401ks, IRAs, Roth IRAs, whatever it may be, savings accounts, investments, real estate, and you're trying to put as much money away so we can, so when you reach the summit of retirement, which would be that point in time, when you're gonna drop 10 and punt and fully retire, you could be age 65 or age 70, as many of my clients are now pushing retirement uh, further out because of uh, the economic environment that we're living in, then you're reaching the top of the mountain. Now, as you're trying to get to the summit in your retirement life, uh, you're concerned with the amount of money that you're putting away on a regular basis for retirement, uh, the risk that you're taking, what kind of rate of return are you receiving on your investment? Is that going to be adequate? Is it apropos to, to the goals and objectives uh, that you want to that you want to have? Uh, what kind of standard of living do you want to have in retirement as opposed to where you're at today? So you may be reducing your standard, your, your current standard of living in order to have flexibility so you can put more money, more money away for retirement. So when you reach the summit of retirement, then you have more money to use in your retirement life. So as you're climbing the mountain, once you get to the summit, um, everything is fine as far as long as you followed, you know, the contribution levels, the rates of returns, the reduction, the reduction of risk and so forth. Once you get to the summit and you start to come down the mountain, you're coming down on the other side of the mountain, which would be your retirement years. Uh, your enjoyment years, as I call them, the rules of engagement totally change. Now, instead of you having to worry about the rates of returns on accumulation and the amount of money that you're putting away in retirement, now you're not too concerned about the rate of return on your investments, but you're more concerned about the distribution rate of the assets that you have in retirement in order to maintain your standard of living. All of a sudden, those rules are changing completely because now it's about retirement distribution. It's about uh, the taxation of your retirement distribution assets on an annual basis. Uh, the inflation that may be hindering those retirement distribution plans as you come down the mountain, the higher the inflation, 
the more money you, the more money you're going to have to take out of those retirement accounts in order to meet your standard of living and maintain that level of purchasing goal that you have set for yourself and your family. And now you're worried about something that you had never, ever worried before, which is longevity planning, you know, running out of money before you run out of life. So if you haven't done any type of planning along those lines, you have to watch every single dollar that you take every single year. Because if you take too much, you're going to run out of money before you run out of life. And if, if getting old is bad, getting old and being broke is even worse. So every year you're going to have a tremendous amount of stress because you don't know how far your money is going to be able to take you. Now, what I tell my clients in retirement is that there are three stages of retirement that are very important for them to, to understand. And most of you listening to this uh, uh, video and this podcast probably have never heard of the three stages of retirement. And the way I call these retirement stages are the go-go years, the slow-go years, and the no-go years. So for, for the average American, obviously there are exceptions to the rule, to the rules, but for the average American, the go-go years are usually between the ages of 65 and 75. They retire, they want to explore the world, they want to travel, they want to catch up with life because they have been spending, you know, 40, 45, sometimes even 50 years working, putting money away in order to get to that retirement summit at age 65, for some of you may be age 70. But between 65 and 75, that's what I call the go-go years. You may be spending just as much money in your go-go years, perhaps even more, than all the money that you were spending while you were working. Remember, when you're in retirement, every day is Saturday night. So between 65 and 75, you're gonna start doing trips, you're gonna travel, you're gonna to try to travel the world. For those of you that enjoy that, you know, once you get into your mid 70s, now you're slowing down a little bit. You know, for most Americans, you know, their health is not gonna be as good as it was during the go-go years. So all of a sudden now, you know, they may still do a little bit of traveling in the slow-go years between 75 and 85, but they're not doing as much as they did before. And if they do, they're not doing it for as long or longer periods as they did uh, during the go-go years. So they may have shorter trips. They may want to stay closer to home to spend time with their family and their grandchildren and so forth. And then once you get to the no-go years from age 85 until the day you die, you know, waking up on the green side of the grass is a good day. Uh, and, and now, once again, there are exceptions to the rules. You know, I have a good client that is 96 years of age. Uh, he's still very active, so he's pretty much past the uh, the no-go years, and he's still going. You know, just like the uh, the battery uh, um, uh, commercial, the uh, the Ever Ready ba battery, uh, it keeps going, going, and going. But I also have clients in their early 70s that are pretty much in the no-go years because of their health condition. So understanding how retirement distribution works is very, very important. And the challenge is that the vast majority of you that are thinking about retirement have never actually made that paradigm shift to start thinking about coming down the other side of the mountain of distribution as opposed to climbing the mountain that you have been doing for the vast majority of your time on this earth. So the rules of engagement totally change. And whenever I do an audit on the retirement assets that new clients bring to me for the first time, uh, there's a tremendous disparity between what they want to accomplish and what they will accomplish in retirement. You know, if you're not putting sufficient money away in retirement and if you're not uh, being tax savvy, chances are you're not gonna have a very good retirement life and that's something very important. Uh, for us to discuss during the planning of the Tactical Retirement Blueprint, uh, TRB for, for short. So one of the other points that I make to my clients, again, using analogies, is that if you want to win the financial race, you have to bet on the jockey, not on the horse. Because the blueprint is the most important part. 
you know, can you imagine uh, if you, I don't know if any of you have ever played chess, I've played chess in the past. Can you imagine playing chess without having a chess board? How would you do it? It would be utterly impossible to be able to do that. First of all, you don't know where everything goes and you don't know which way to go because you don't have a chess board that kind of guides you in which direction you can go one way or the other. Well, the same thing happens in retirement. If you don't have a tactical retirement blueprint that has been set up just for you and your family based on your goals and objectives, what do you think the probability is that you're going to be very successful in retirement? And the probably, probability is going to be slim to none uh, from, from that perspective as, as well. So, therefore, if you do have a proper tactical retirement blueprint, then products, the products that we choose in our TRB process, are a byproduct of the tactical retirement blueprint. So we don't choose products first and then strategy second. We choose strategy first and then products second. And that's something that is very important for all of you to consider as you start planning for your retirement life. Now, how do we choose products in our TRB? Uh, we don't worry about what type of product it is. We worry about what it does. So we pay attention to tax planning. We want to make certain that not only during the accumulation stage or climbing the mountain, but during the distribution stage or coming down the mountain, that we can maximize the taxable benefits that are afforded to all Americans under the IRS code. So what happens is most of the clients that we engage for the first time, they have been maxing out their contributions to their IRAs and 401ks. And they don't realize that upon retirement, they're gonna to have to pay taxes on all of those things. You're gonna pay taxes on your pension distributions. You're gonna pay taxes on your uh, taxes on your IRA distributions. You're gonna pay taxes on your 401k distributions. Uh, if you have um, uh, annuities, you're gonna pay taxes on the distribution of annuities. You're going to pay taxes on your mutual funds. You're going to pay taxes on your stocks, bonds. Um, you, may, you may pay taxes on the Social Security benefits that you and your spouse will, will receive in retirement if you haven't done proper provisional income calculations. And that's part of the tactical retirement blueprint because we want our clients to minimize their tax liability in retirement. Actually, a number of the clients that have come to us for the first time they came for one reason and one reason only. And basically what they said is, you know, Bert, we're paying more taxes today than we ever did while we were employed. And the reason for that is while they were employed, you know, they were making contributions to IRAs, 401k, so they were taking those tax deductions. Uh, they were also, uh, if they had a home, they were taking certain deductions. If they had a business, they were taking business deductions. Once you get to that retirement life and you start to come down the mountain uh, from the summit, a lot of those just go away. So that automatically increases your tax uh, liability significantly, significantly uh, while you're in enjoying your retirement uh, life. Now, um, one of the things that it's important to understand from a taxable perspective is that when it comes to choosing whether to put money away for retirement on a pre-tax basis versus a post-tax basis, the way I like to explain it to my clients is, look, if you own a wheat farm somewhere in the Midwest in the United States, would you rather pay taxes on a few bushels of seeds in the spring? Or would you rather pay taxes on truckloads of harvest in the fall? So if you're putting money away in a 401k, traditional 401k or traditional IRA, you're actually paying taxes on the harvest because you took a deduction on the seeds that you contributed to those plants, 
But upon retirement, you're going to have to pay taxes on not only what you contributed, but also the growth of those investment accounts over a 20, 25, 30, 35 year period. So the tax liability may be a lot greater in the future than it is today. Now, if you were to put money into tax free retirement accounts, municipal bonds, Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks, uh, 7702 plans, which are cash value life insurance plans, you're paying taxes on the seeds, you're paying taxes on the contributions, but then the growth is going to be totally tax free in the future. And the question that you have to ask yourself, uh, depending on how you feel about taxation in the US is, what do you feel that taxes are going to be in the next 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years from now? Do you think taxes are going to be lower than they are today? Do you think taxes are going to be at the same level that they are today? Or do you think, like I do, that taxes are going to be much greater than they are today because someone has to pay for all these liabilities that we are acquiring in the United States? The unfunded liabilities uh, for the U.S. government right now is sitting at $170 trillion. Our national debt is north of $30 trillion, and our uh, national deficit is over a trillion dollars a year. So the only way that the government is going to generate revenues is by taxing each American more. So you have to pay attention. You know, what percentage of your retirement contribution plans do you have in uh, seed taxes versus harvest taxes? And those are things that are very critical that most of you have never paid attention uh, to from, from that perspective. Now, the other area that we pay attention in the tactical retirement blueprint is the sequencing of returns. See, if you lose 50% in the stock market in one year, it's gonna take, what, 100% to get back to where you were? So the sequencing of returns is very, very critical. Because if you retire, if you retire in a year where the market has positive returns for a period of two to three years versus someone that retires in a year in which the market has negative returns for two to three years, the disparity of the account values are totally different. So are you that good to be able to time the market? to where you will only, re only retire in a positive market return for the first two to three, perhaps even five years of your retirement life in the very beginning? Or are you gonna retire where the market is gonna be crashing as it did in 2008, 2001, and as it did uh, in, in 2022? So no one is that good. You're not that good, I'm not that good, and I've been doing this for many, many years, you know, 35 years at this point in time. So sequencing of returns is very important because it's going to determine success or failure in retirement as part of the overall retirement portfolio. So we've talked about tax planning. We've talked about sequencing of returns. Um, we also need to, and I'll touch upon this briefly, longevity planning. See, when you're coming down that retirement mountain, and remember I said to you that for most Americans, you're trying to figure out you know, whether you're gonna have enough money to take you to the promised land because you don't wanna run out of money before you run out of life. Well, you never know, because you, uh, there are so many variables. You know, what are your account values uh, doing? What kind of investments do you have? What kind of rate of return are you, are you generating? Are you suffering any losses because of sequencing of returns? Uh, are you suffering any, uh, suffering any losses because of a standard deviation in your beta coefficients of accounts. I'm not going to get into any of that. Um, so those are things that are going to keep you awake at night. And you're not going to have a very enjoyable retirement life because you have to be, you're going to be tripping over pennies trying to get to dollars. So longevity planning is very important because you want to have income guarantees. If you don't have income guarantees in retirement, chances are you're going to be a retirement failure. So if I were to ask you, if you have a choice, what percentage of your assets would you like to have income guaranteed in retirement? 
if you tell me less than 100 percent then you should, you should you shouldn't be listening to me you should turn me off and go to go do something else because there's nothing i can do for you most of the clients that i deal with today that are already retired and some have been retired 20 years others have been retired five to, retired five to ten years they tell me bert i can sleep at night because of all the planning that we have done together i can sleep to the fact that every single month i'm going to get a retirement check or every every single quarter or every single year i'm going to be receiving a guaranteed retirement income and i'm going to receive that for the rest of my life um, the way you're going to sleep in that scenario is totally different than if you have to worry every single day as to what's going to happen to your money tomorrow morning now in the next podcast that i will cover next week next week I'm going to go into details on some of the products that we choose based on the tactical retirement blueprint that we do for all of our clients. So I'm hoping that you have enjoyed uh, this uh, podcast today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can call me at area code 305-304-4770. Again, 305 305- 304-4770. You can also send me an email at Bert, B-E-R-T, at BertSalazar.com, B-E-R-T-S-A-L-A-Z-A-R.com. And always remember that my goal for you and for your family is to kind of help you change the way that you see things, because when you change the way that you see things, the things that you see change. So once again, thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time today, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.